The White Sox hot stove is cooking. They've made yet another trade. I can't even go an hour with them without them making a trade. This time they're sending right-handed pitcher and closing pitcher Kendall Graveman to the Astros. And the Astros are acquiring him again for the second time in three years in exchange for the number five prospect in the Astros organization, catcher Corey Lee. Before we get started, as always, you know the drill. Hit that like button, subscribe. Try deadline videos happening and coming out when they when trades break. So leading up to now on the deadline, and we'll have stuff past the deadline as well, so you won't want to miss it. Alrighty, Kendall Graveman. This season he has a 3.48 ERA in 45 games, 44 innings pitched, 42 strikeouts, and a 1.205 whip. For his career, he has a 4 ERA in 629 and two-thirds innings pitched, 470 strikeouts, and a 1. 3-2-8 whip. Last season with Chicago, he had a 3-18 ERA and 65 innings pitched and a uh, 1.4 whip. Like I said, Graven's already been traded to Houston once at the trade deadline. That was in 2021. And with Houston, he pitched a 3.13 ERA in 23 innings pitched and, uh, and had a 1.391 whip. And that was after a very, very incredibly strong first half with Seattle where he had a 0.82 ERA in 33 innings. And like I said, last season, 3-1-8 ERA. So Kendall Graveman, so ever since 2021, Graveman's been a very solid pitcher with Seattle, with Houston, with now Chicago, and now going back to Houston. And interesting thing with Graveman in here is he signed through 2020. He'll be a free agent in 2025. He still has another year and $8 million remaining on his contract. So the Astros will get him for the rest of the season and then another year behind it, which is very, very important. Considering the fact that the they have a bunch of free agent relievers with Hector Neris, Ryan Stanek, and Phil Maton, uh, Maton, excuse me. So because he has a year of control remaining, the Astros did have to give up their number five prospect in their organization, catcher Corey Lee. Corey Lee's always been a very well-regarded prospect in the Astros organization. His uh, scouting grades are a 40 hit, 55 power. 40 uh, run, 70 arm, one of the best catching arms in all of baseball, uh, 45 field for an overall 45. This season with AAA, he's hitting 283 with five home runs, a 328 on base percentage, and a 734 OPS. We go back to last season with AAA, he hit 238 with 25 home runs and a 790 OPS. He does strike out quite a fair bit amount, 75 strikeouts in 283 at-bats and only walked 17 times, but he does have 12 stolen bases as well. So he's an above-average runner. <clears throat> I mean, he saw the big leagues last year with Houston, hit 160 with no home runs in uh, 25 at-bats. But again, his arm is there. He's going to catch base runner stealing. He's a top prospect. He's put the He had the power numbers in 2022. He has the average numbers this season. So it's just a matter of, with the White Sox, if they can find kind of the good median. And I'd have to imagine that Corey Lee is going to come up and play at the big league level. He's probably going to catch the rest of the season for Chicago, and which would probably mean Yasmani Grandal is going to be on the move as well. Again, as I predicted in the trade deadline sellers video, the White Sox, a full, full rebuild is coming. They're probably going to trade absolutely everybody and anybody and get as much value as they can. Overall in this trade, I really, really like what the uh, both sides did here. I think that the Astros, you needed to get another reliever to push. You guys are only a couple, like a handful of games out of the uh, out of the AL West behind the Rangers. And one of their, their bullpen, especially in this, addressing a year next year as well, is very, very important. And then they're giving up Corey Lee. And I mean, sure, they didn't really have a whole lot of catcher, but this opens the playbook for the Astros to go and get a catcher. That's going to be long term. I know the Cardinals have been thinking about trading uh, Wilson Contreras. Uh, it's probably unlikely considering he just signed that deal, but I expect the Astros to probably go out and look to get a catcher now that they just traded one of their top prospects. But overall, the winner of this trade has to be the Chicago White Sox. My, oh, my. I mean, a year and a half of Kendall Graveman. I know Corey Lee's numbers have been volatile. Um, between the average and power and really didn't play well in the big leagues in 2022 but i mean you're getting a really top prospect top, a really good excuse me <laughs> you guys are getting a really good catching prospect rick Hahn is out here making great trades again i mean number five prospect in the astros organization for a reliever 
the market is crazy. This kind of makes me think that the Mets could have gotten more in for David Robertson. But again, I'm really happy with the return for that. That's another video. If you guys haven't seen that, make sure to watch that one as well. But I mean, the the White Sox, I really like this. 25 home runs in AAA as a catcher with a great arm. I mean, if he's able to put, you know, even 20 home runs and hit 250 in the big leagues as a catcher, that's really, really, really good um, for the White Sox. And he's probably going to play, come up and play catcher for the rest of the season for Chicago. So overall, I like this trade a very lot for Chicago. You guys are getting an A. Astros, you're probably going to get a B for this, a B plus, maybe B minus, somewhere in that range, because you're getting a year and a half of Kendall Graveman. And I feel like Corey Lee, if you feel like he's exchangeable, expendable, excuse me, then I feel like that's a good trade. But let me know what you guys think about this trade in the comment section below. As always, hit that like and subscribe. Tons of trade deadline content coming out for y'all, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. It's delicious.